healthy crops depend on healthy soils. As farmers, it follows then that our soils and their output in crop yields depend on our soil management practices. It's vital thus that we spend time understanding the intricate balances within the soils and ensure that our agricultural activities promote these balances rather than destroy them. Our soils are alive. They're teeming with millions of microorganisms that are responsible for recycling organic matter, breaking it down so that the nutrients it contains are once again available to plants. Their activities also build soil structure. Synthetic fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides and other inputs often kill soil microorganisms due to their toxic effects as well as the changes they make to the soil pH. Without these microorganisms, our soils are dead. In dead soils, plants struggle to get nutrients, resulting in compromised immunity in much the same way as humans succumb to diseases when on a poor diet. Plants with low immunity cannot yield at optimum and are targeted by pests and diseases. To counter these effects, expensive toxic inputs are used, adding to the vicious cycle of man-made soil degradation. The resulting impact is the non-sustainable food production systems of today that rely heavily on toxins. If we are to farm sustainably, it's imperative that we build our soils and create the best environment possible for microorganisms to get on with their work of metabolizing nutrients for our plants to feed off. Although this may look like soil, it is in fact the biodegradable remains of a cocktail of ingredients metabolized by microorganisms resulting in nutritious plant food, compost. We make our compost using materials mostly available on the farm itself. Animal bedding, consisting of straw soaked in animal urine, is collected and stacked behind the animal sheds where our composting begins, close to the crops that we should be using it on. Besides animal bedding, we also add farmyard manure from goats, cows, sheep and chickens, and comfrey leaves which add micronutrients to the compost, as well as help in raising the temperature in the heap. Comfrey is so vital to our compost production that we prioritise growing it alongside our cash crops. In addition, we add dry leaves, as well as farm crop waste and weeds. Nothing goes to waste. All biodegradable materials are recycled back into the soil. Kitchen waste can be added too, as long as it does not contain meat or dairy products, as these will attract scavengers that will destroy the heap. We fortify our compost by adding two other ingredients. Firewood ash, that besides discouraging insects from living in the compost, also adds lime and potassium to the final mix. Ash also helps control odours and neutralises the pH of the compost. Rock phosphate is also an important addition to the mix. It's a naturally occurring, slow-release phosphate important for fruit formation. Rock phosphate also includes other important microelements like magnesium, silicon, calcium, copper, selenium and more. It promotes soil recapitalization and correction of acidic and leached soils damaged by years of fertilizer use. Finally, when moistening the compost, we use water with EM, effective microorganisms, which helps speed up the decomposition period of the compost heap, reducing the composting time to one month or less. Optimum compost production requires working with large volumes of raw materials. As such, it makes sense to have the materials produced and collected and stacked as close to the compost making site as possible. It also makes sense to have this production site close to the cropping area. It's important thus to plan ahead when developing your farm layout. A good sized compost heap is one meter by two meters by one meter high. It will require a good volume of raw material which will result in about a 40% yield of compost after decomposition, which takes approximately a month. A smaller heap may not heat up as required due to its large surface area volume ratio. There's no need to dig a pit, nor put a fence around a compost heap, as this only hinders maintenance. It's almost impossible to turn a heap within a fence. A pit also allows water to collect in the bottom. A compost heap must have good drainage, and ideally should be built up in one go, not over a period of time. This ensures complete decomposition. New materials should be stored to build subsequent heaps, not piled onto already decomposing heaps. Depending on your needs, it's good to produce at least one heap a week, this will result in a continuous supply of soil food and thus plant food. Start by choosing a site and mark out the 1 meter by 2 meter floor plan. You can do this by putting a 1 meter stake at each corner. 
Begin building the heap in layers, using the most coarse material at the bottom of the heap so as to ensure good drainage. Add layers of materials, alternating dried materials with green materials, sprinkling in a layer of ash and rock phosphate, and every so often, dampening with water, or EM in water, a dilution of approximately 1 litre of EM to 100 litres of water. Continue to build the compost in layers until you've reached 1 metre in height. Ensure the entire heap is damp, then cover the top with banana leaves, or plastic, paper, or grass to protect it from rain. Drive a stake into the centre of the pit. This will act as your thermometer. After five days, take the stake out and feel it. If it's warm, your heap is doing fine. If it's cold, however, there is a problem. The heap may have too much green material, in which case you'll need to break it down and build it again, adding more dry materials. Assuming all is well, you'll notice the heap begins to reduce in size almost daily. At two and a half weeks, turn all the outer edges of the pit into the middle so they too can decompose. Your heap will be smaller. Reduce the base size so that it's about two and a half feet in the middle. Ensure the compost is always damp, don't let it dry out. Watch out for white fungus growth in the heap. This signifies it's not damp enough and will affect the nutritional quality of the final product, which has been consumed by the white fungus. Keep your stake in the heap and check after another three days. It should feel warm to touch and may even appear smoky. Your compost is ready when the temperatures have dropped and the entire heap is cold. Don't attempt to use it while it's still warm, as this will affect the roots of the crops you're growing. It should smell deliciously earthy. If for any reason the smell is offensive, then something is not right. Do not feed this to your soil or your crops. Start all over again, adding more dry materials to the heap. When transplanting crops, use generous amounts of compost mixed into the soil. Remember, what you're doing is creating an environment for microorganisms to live in. After planting, mulch the top of the soil to protect it from drying out due to the sun or from erosion due to the rain. For agriculture to be sustainable, we need to recognise the importance of the role played by microorganisms in contributing to soil health. Our efforts should be focused on providing the best environment possible to ensure they flourish. Mm -hmm.